up until now, I brought out the blocks, I brought out paper, we did a bunch of folding, we talked about it. Why were we able to do that? Because they all had edges. They all had edges, exactly. Every three-dimensional shape that we have worked with so far is just made up of other two-dimensional shapes, right? Spheres are not that way. You cannot unfold a sphere like you can unfold a pyramid or a cone or a prism. It can't be done. So we built the formulas for prisms and pyramids by breaking it up into the pieces that made it and then finding the area of each piece, yes? We can't do that with a sphere. The sphere formulas were gotten, were arrived at exclusively by experimentation. So back in the day, instead of playing Call of Duty 12, mathematicians played around with shapes and they figured these formulas out. Nobody knows who did it originally, but at some point somebody wrote the stuff down. For example, Pythagoras, A squared, B squared, C squared, that dude existed, he's the one that wrote it down. But there were countless people back in ancient Greece working on math problems. He just happened to be the first guy that wrote it down. Everybody with me? Same thing here. So these two formulas, they can't be demonstrated. So I'm telling you, they found it through experiment. Everybody good? All right. So they're really simple to deal with because you already know what pi is. You already know what r is. It's no problem, right? Everybody cool? Okay. And this is surface. And you know what d is. If you know the diameter, you can use it. No problem at all, yeah? The problem begins when we start cutting spheres up. All right? This is a whole sphere, right? The problems begin when we start cutting them up. And with the magic of technology, I'm going to cut this sphere in half. Whoa. Magic. Mind blown. Now, you guys are smart kids, yes? Yeah. This formula gave me the surface area of a sphere, yes? Yeah. Pretend my angry bomb bird here is a perfect sphere. Um, if it. I dip it in paint, what happens? He gets totally covered and we get the surface area, yes? Yeah. And that's four pi r squared. No problem with that, right? Yeah. What if I cut this dude in half? then logically it would be 4 pi r squared divided by 2, which would be 2 pi r squared, yes? Yeah. Except, what did I make right oh, here? The top. In a solid sphere, what did I just make? A circle. So is it enough to just say 2 pi r squared? No, I must add a circle. What's a circle's area? What's a circle's area? We've done it already to death this year, guys. What's a circle's area? Pi r squared. So, if two pi r squareds covers all this gray stuff, and one pi r square covers the red stuff, what is the total for a solid hemisphere? Two pi r squareds and one pi r squareds is what? Three pi r squareds. Everybody understand? Yeah. If it's solid, what if it's hollow? It wouldn't change at all, would it? Because the inside that you have now experienced Exposed is the same as the outside. Does everybody understand? That is usually where kids get lost. Do you all understand what I am saying? I'm going to trust that you do. So this is for when something is solid. If it's hollow, the surface area won't change. Technically. Right? Everybody with me? Okay. Let's come over to volume. 
Why is that a yucky formula? Why do you hate it as soon as you see it? Because it's a improper. It's got a fraction. And fractions make us... Ugh, right? And a little sick in our tummies. So I like to write this in a different way. I write 4 pi r cubed and divide the whole thing by 3. It's the exact same thing. But this, kids find easier to put into their calculators. I don't care which way you use, but I find that one easier to do. Now, what if I wanted a half sphere's volume? You would divide that by 2, correct? So it's that divided by 2, right? Barf. That's a yucky notation, isn't it? <laughs> She's right. You would divide it by six instead. Oh, but the question is why? Divided by two is the same as times one half, isn't it? And four pi r cubed times one is four pi r cubed. Three times two is six. And there's dividing by six. But... Technically, in math class, would we ever leave the 4 and the 6 that way? Think back to grade 5. Would you ever leave that fraction? You'd make it what? 2 pi r cubed divided by 3 for a hemisphere. Whoa. My brain. We only did one thing, dude. I know. Exactly. Okay. I'm not smart. Yes, you are. No. Yes, you are. You've spent 10 years telling yourself you're not smart because you don't have confidence in math. Kingston doesn't think I'm smart either. Confidence is, is all that matters in math. Jesus. All right. Everybody cool? Okay. Shake your heads out. Talk to your neighbor for a moment because we're about to do some crazy-ass algebra. Kingston! Right. Hi. And we are back, please, ladies and gentlemen. Question number one here is a stupid math class question, isn't it? For a lot of reasons. One, would you ever wrap a basketball as a ball? That's idiotic, right? You'd put it in a box because wrapping something round is a pain in the ass. All right. So it is still a math class question. Up until now, we have been looking for the surface area, yes, or the volume. In this case, what is different? We know the surface area. We've got to find the radius, right? Well, we do start the way we should always start a surface area or radius question. Or surface area or volume question. You should write out the formula. What is the formula for the surface area of a sphere? Surface area equals 4 pi r squared. Now, put in what you know. Do you know the surface area? Yes. What is it? It's 2,500. 2,500 equals 4 pi r squared. Now my job is to find r. We just did an algebra question. How do I find r here? What has to be gotten rid of? I got to get rid of 4. What math do I see happening to 4, Louis? Multiply. So what math do I do to 4? Divide. What else must I get rid of? What math is happening to pi? So what must I do? Divide. If I divide this side by 4 pi, what must I do to this side? Divide by 4 pi. Now, here is where we get into trouble. How do you do that on your calculator? 2,500 divided by 4, and then whatever that is, pi. 
2,500 divided by 4 pi. Everybody try to make this happen because your next step on your calculator, these two are going to cancel. You're going to be R squared, yeah? Mm -hmm. I need that number there. Everybody try it. Tell me what you get. What do you get? Okay, so one of the answers we have is 1963 point blah. Who cares? Somebody give me another number. I got the same answer. 795.7. What else? Ah, my brain's hurting. Hold up. Kieran. 198.96 or whatever you said. I didn't quite hear you. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Trust me. Anybody got anything else? I got like 198. Yeah, we got 198 right there. Aisha? That's what I was trying to say. Yeah. Okay. Then you put the pie in later. All right, we'll talk about that in a second too. All right. Everybody cool? Which one of those is right? Because one of them is right. 198 is right. How did you know that? Because everybody that put 1963 and everybody that put 795 thinks they're right because their calculator told them. So how did you know 198 is correct? Because I used brackets and that felt smart. You know, if you know how to use your calculator, you know you need brackets, right? The other thing you could do is this. Isn't 4 pi approximately 12? And isn't 2,500 approximately 2,400? And isn't 2,400 divided by 12 approximately 200? Yeah. Oh, hey. So if you took a second to estimate, you would know if you were right or not. Now, the question becomes, how did you get that wrong answer? You didn't know. You don't know how to use your calculator. Is that the same thing as not knowing math? No. No. Those are totally different things. I can drive a car. I can't fix it. Everybody understand? I can work my body. I can play rugby. I can't take out my own appendix. Picking up what I'm putting down? So, if you're going to do that in your calculator, you need to remember, as Eric says, to push 2,500 divided by bracket 4 pi. Bracket. Because if you don't put that bracket... Your calculator does what you tell it to do. And without those brackets, it does bed mass. It does 2,500 divided by 4, which is 625, times 3.14, which is 1963. Your calculator is not smart. It has no brain. It does what you tell it to do. Okay. Now, Aisha said, I'm going to leave that pi out till the end. And that's absolutely right. You could do that, but you have to remember. If you're going to divide 2,500 by 4, that's 625. You also have to divide that by pi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you have to. I'm just saying you got to remember that. A lot of people do the 625 divided by 4. They're like, yeah, it's 625. And then they think it's 625 pi. And they think it's multiplied. I knew that's what you meant. Everybody cool? So we now know that this is 198.96. But why are you putting a number there, Mr. Myers? Because the question in this case is asking for the actual radius, yes? Or as close as I can get to it. So is my R isolated now? Is it? No, you have the exponent on there. There's an exponent there. I do the opposite of what I see. I see squared. What's the opposite? Not divide. Square root. Square root, square root. And you'll get 14 point something. 14.1. Is everybody cool with that? Yes. Now I want to do something a little weird here for some of you. When we did this problem, we put in numbers and we did algebra, yeah? Okay. As you guys go further in things that use math, like physics and chemistry and things like that, there's a ton of formulas. And those formulas have tons of letters. 
And sometimes you want to figure out what one of the letters is, not the answer, just like we did here. And your teachers will not want you to do this. I don't know why they don't want you to do this, but they will say, I want you to solve this equation for R. And they won't give you any numbers. So they will say, here's the equation, SA equals 4 pi R squared. Solve for R, and they'll give you no numbers. So what? And in my 17 years of teaching, longer than that, I'm a big liar, 19 years of teaching, this, for some reason, is very problematic to you guys. And I don't know why that is. Because when the number was there, we had no problem, did we? So just do the same thing. I need that R to be by itself. So I got to get rid of the 4 and the pi, right? So what do I put over here? I divide by 4 pi. So now I've got SA over 4 pi equals R squared. Now what? The, yes, you can. What do you do to get that R by itself? You square root that side, yes? That gives me R. So what do you do to this side? Square root. So the square root is the surface area divided by 4 pi, and then you square root the whole thing. And now you could find R that way. I don't know why teachers get so hung up on you being able to do this without numbers. But they do. So I'm just warning you. I don't care. I put my numbers in first and then solve. Still even though I'm a math teacher. But that doesn't mean I don't have the skill to do that if I need to. Picking up what I'm putting down? Mm. Read my mail, mowing my lawn? No, only if you pay me. All right. Turn the page over, please. On to page 34. And here we have what looks like a math class problem, but in reality is a very huge part of a lot of people's jobs. When you buy something in store, what does it come in? Box. A package, right? Yeah. Okay. Are those packages free? Somebody had to make them, right? Mm -hmm. And it costs money to make those packages, yeah? Mm -hmm. How does that affect you, the consumer? No, you gotta buy it. The more packaging I waste, the more money I spend to package something, yes? Mm -hmm. Who gets that cost? Me, the producer, or you, the consumer? You, the consumer. So it behooves me to package as efficiently as possible, yes? As a producer. Somebody is paid very good money to decide how big the cereal box is. Somebody is paid very good money to decide how big the canister that your tennis balls come in. Everybody picking up what I'm putting down? Now, somebody here always says, yeah, but that's not going to be me. And I say, okay, you can see the future. You know what you're going to do for the rest of your life. Good for you. I didn't at your age. So I like to learn how to do all kinds of stuff. Let's look at this question. If I say to you right now, solve this problem, a bunch of you almost immediately are going to grab your calculator. And that's going to be a mistake. And here's why. If you grab your calculator without a plan of attack, what are you going to do? Mess up. You're going to mess up. So get a plan of attack. What is happening here? How many different ways could you illustrate what is happening here? Could you draw it? Sure. What would it look like if we were going to draw it? There's a box, right? And what's in the box? Three golf balls. Is that one way to show it? Yeah. Excellent. Could we show it with math? Yeah. Is this a volume or a surface area question? Volume. Why? Because it says volume in the question. But really, why is it a volume question? Because it's asking about the space inside, isn't it? So it has to be volume. So I know it's volume. So what's happening in math here? I have the volume of what? I have two volumes here, don't I? What are the two things I have volumes for? 
I got the box, the volume of the box. And what do I got to do with the volume of the golf balls? Add, subtract, multiply, divide. I'm trying to find the empty space. Is it add, subtract, multiply, or divide? Minus. Pardon? Yeah. Minus. Minus. The volume of the golf balls. Agreed? That's what's happening in words, isn't it? Yeah? I have a, I have a box, and I'm going to remove the volume of the balls, and that's going to be the empty space left over, right? What's happening mathematically? What shape is that box? Square? Rectangle. Rectangle? Rectangle. Prism. Prism. It's, a vol it's the volume of a prism minus what? The volume of how many spheres? Three volumes of a sphere, yes? That's what's happening mathematically. What's happening algebraically? What's the volume of a prism? We did this yesterday. Area of base times the height. So the base is 3 by 3 and the height was 9, right? Right? So it's LWH minus 3. What's the volume of a sphere? divided by 3. 4 pi r cubed divided by 3. That's what's happening algebraically. Have we touched our calculator yet? That looks really ugly, doesn't it? Can you fix it up? What is the one thing you could do to make that look really not so ugly anymore? Before you even go to your calculator. What's happening there and there? It's 3. They cancel out. And I get LWH minus 4 pi r cubed. Before I do any math, I can make it that simple. What is easier to put into your calculator? That or that? Yellow or green? Yellow. Yellow. Now, I will put in some numbers and go to my calculator. What's the LWH? 3 times 3 times 9 minus 4 pi. What's the R? 3. Nope. Ooh. No, 1.5. Ah, 1.5 cubed. I, do I need to go to my calculator yet? No. Still no, because what's 3 times 3? Nine. What's 9 times 9? 81. 81 minus 4 pi 1.5 cubed. Now, I would go to my calculator when I only need to push 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 buttons. You guys try and do that and tell me what you get for an answer. Because this is now, we've done the math, haven't we? Right? This is the math. What's the only, la what's the last step? Use the calculator. One is math. One is using a calculator. They are not the same thing. Right? 38.659. Uh, 38 38.6. 59. 659. So 38.66 centimeters cubed is wasted space. Let's hear some other answers and talk about how that's happening. Because shouldn't we all get the same number? So how do we have 138.58 and 138.66? Who else has a number for me? Somebody always has a number that's totally off 38 right here because it's a calculator issue. It's not math issue. Because again, knowing how your calculator works is important for you. Is it important for me? For me to know how your calculator works? Is it important for your neighbor to know how your calculator works? Whose responsibility is it to learn how your calculator works? Mine. Yours. So let's see what the problem is here. I got my calculator right here. 81 minus 4 pi times 1.5. 
cubed. I get 38.588. So Louie, you have the same calculator as me. What happened? I said it. I said it that number, but you didn't hear me right. Oh, well, my fault then, not yours. I'm the idiot. Look at how gray-haired I am. I'm old. But I could have sworn you said 0.66. Oh, you rounded the 5, 8, to 6. That's what mine did. You said 38.6 originally? Yeah. Oh, that's why. Okay. Yeah, I like two decimal places, right? So I heard you say 0. 0.6 and then 0. 0.6 again. My fault. Not yours. Mine automatically rounded to 0.6. Some calculators will do that, especially if you're using your phone calculator. Yeah. Maybe. I abused my ears as a youth. I went to 50 million concerts. Never wore earplugs or anything like that. He knows who the misfits are. How many of you guys have been to a concert before? And at the end of the concert, when you're lying at home in bed, you can hear the sound in your ears, right? You should love that sound because you're never going to hear that sound again. By the time you wake up after sleeping, that particular is a frequency you will never, ever, ever hear again. The more you know. Which is why rock stars are all going deaf. Like the singer for ACDC. Can no longer go on tour because he can't hear. Fortunately, they got Axl Rose, which is a pretty good trade-off, if yeah. you ask me. But it's true. Guitarist for The Who. One of the greatest guitarists ever. Can't play guitar anymore. Can't play electric guitar anymore. Because he's got tinnitus. So take care of your ears. You only get one set. And when you listen to music, the earbud only has to go half a millimeter to your eardrum. It doesn't need to be loud enough for me to hear. I'm not saying it is. I'm just warning you. Don't ruin your ears. Because you only get one set. Although hearing aids are getting so tiny and cool now, you can put them right in there. And nobody even knows you have one. Back in the day, See, if I were to get a hearing aid, I'd get one of those cool old school ones that has like the wire that goes down to your pocket like your great, great grandpa had. I think that would be wicked. Actually, what I really want is one of those big old horns that really old people had, from, like when you see ca cartoons from the old days. I'd be sitting up here, so what do you do with both of R squared? Square root, Mr. Mars. What? <laughs> we, what? Square root. We get out our calculator, you idiot. Well, we don't even use our calculator. We just go into the computer that we had implanted in our brain. Oh, well, back in my day, we didn't have no computers in our brains. That would be super funny. I can't wait to be old. I'm going to be the grumpiest Here old we man. Are. Are. <laughs> Let's go have a run. See who wins. Okay. 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 All right. Math time. All right, I'm shutting up. You guys got 35. I lie. Worst kind of liar. 25 minutes. You're going to do page 35 to 38. Now listen to me closely. Sketch a net. That just means draw what it would look like if it were flat. Right? We've done, we did that a ton in our notes from a couple of days ago, yeah? Okay. I have the weekend to do this. You do. You have three whole days plus the 25 minutes I'm giving you right now. And when you think about it, Mr. Mars, that's four pages. There's only two or three questions per page. This is the ballpark page. No, it's not. You're going to be paid $500,000 to do this stuff. All right. Go. Go. 